production, ID Media Production Service. Today we're going to make Texflex cables. And if you don't know what Texflex is, it's this material that you get right here. This stuff is almost like those Chinese finger locks. So you put this on your own custom mic cables. Can you see that? You push it together and it expands and you can get it over the cable. You can save a ton of cable weight by using these little lines, these little XLR lines. They'll also be just as durable, this stuff over on top of it. Some supplies you're gonna need is of course, some XLR lines. What I like to do is go ahead and take apart old snakes that I have, take the big rubber jacket off, and uh, take all these little lines out. If you got some old snakes laying around, XLR snakes or uh, old uh, TRS ones, you can take the lines apart and save yourself some money. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a lot of work. I took apart a whole 100 foot snake with a knife taking the rubber jacket off the whole thing. So, to get all my own little custom cables. Um, then you need to get have some Texflex material. They come in all kinds of different colors as you can see here. I got a white, got red, yellow, blue, green, and black. Supplies you're gonna need is, of course, a soldering iron. When I turn that on, you'll see it turn red right there. And then it's gonna get really hot, so be careful of your fingers so you don't burn yourself. Um, of course, we need some solder. We're gonna need some XLR ends. We need the female end. And we need a male end. And let me grab one of those for you. Then we're gonna need a male end. That's male because it's got the prongs. Just like, uh, you know what I mean, a real male, like a human male. <laughs> okay, so we got those two XLR ends we're gonna solder on. Um, we're gonna need a pair of wire strippers. We're gonna need a heat gun. I'll show you why. We're gonna heat shrink the text flakes over it. And then this is optional, but this is something I personally like to do. What I like to do is put a dab of glue in between those, around those little solder joints in there. Just a little dab and to protect them. That's just my personal preference. Yeah, we need. Also, I like to use a sponge and wet it down and then we'll be putting the solder dipped into that to clean the end of the solder rod. Then we'll need heat shrink. We're also gonna need one ice cream bar of your choosing. Oh. For your favorite candies. Or for your health nuts, instead of your candies, a banana. But you know what? Today, I'm not using a banana. Let's get started. So first I'm gonna go ahead and take this and wet this down. Here's a little cool contraption I made for soldering. I don't know if you guys got little alligator arms or they got soldering table kits that you can buy. But instead I took a Tama drum clip, drilled a hole through this uh, alligator clip, put a bolt and an old piece of a mic, mic clip to hold that alligator clip on. This is an old piece of a mic stand right there and then look at that. It's all metal on the inside. Soldering iron goes right in hold it and this is just screwed in 
or super glued down to a round mic stand base that I had that was stripped. Then I can make another video about how to make one of these just out of old parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my solder iron in there, get my solder up there so I know all my soldering stuff's there. We'll have my glue gun, my glue gun on this side. We'll have our pieces of mic stuff over on this side. Of course, you're gonna need butane for your soldering iron if you got a, if you have a non-electric soldering iron. You can see I also have a Leatherman Wave, my favorite Leatherman. This is just a great tool to have. I use this in my gigs. It's got a light screwdriver. This is the kicker of why I love this thing. The glasses screwdriver, meow. And it's got a Phillips and a flathead. Really awesome scissors. Everything on this Leatherman locks. If you can see the button there, right there. That locks all these tools so you'll never hurt yourself and look at the blades on this some wicked blades now some of these tools are optional um, and of course at the end of the soldering job we're gonna go ahead and test it with an XLR tester and I can also do speak ons with this I can do TRS and I'll show you how to read a cable tester real quick all right here's one so you put the male on one end the female on the other and you'll see that there's these that little light right there little light okay it's goes one two three four five and that means how many lines that are opening or that are getting what do you want to call it that are conducting through the loop. So in an XLR cable, we only have three. We have, let's see, we have a, a hot ground, and then we have the shield. The shield is the wire that's bare wrapped around the other two. Um, that is so that way when cables are running next to each other, they don't interfere. It blocks the interference. But the way you use a cable tester is you scroll through each one and see if you're getting contact anyways from each side. That means there's no breaks. If there's one wrong, these two, or if they're flipped around on one end, you'll see like a yellow and then a green on whatever one that's flipped around and then you got it wrong. So they need to be reading green and yellow on each uh, conductor. And then of course there is no four or five on this one in XLR cables, so.